Hello everyone and welcome to a new In The Mail, a series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We're going to start with this interesting looking controller type module. So we got uh, what looks like a uh, big switching device here uh, that probably needs a heatsink while working. Well, this is a uh, beefy triac. It can do 100 amps and can also withstand 1000 amps uh, of non-repetitive um, non peaks. We kind of started from the wrong side from the output of this module, but uh, that's what really stands out from this module and I wanted to mention that. Uh, next, we have an uh, opto isolator here, and it's a special kind of opto -is isolator which has a uh, triac output driver. So this this guy can drive this uh, triac directly, and this separates the uh, two sides of the board. Let's check the clearance on the back. It seems like we have good clearance here. It's only if they would have have moved this uh, this track for the LED out of the way, it would have been even better. But uh, here on this side, it looks like we only have about three millimeters of uh, clearance, uh, which I don't think it's uh, ideal. If I were to design this, I would have done it with at least five millimeters of uh, clearance here. I don't see the point of extending this uh, ground plane so much uh, so close to to the uh, hot side but anyway let's continue we have a second opto isolator here and um, the role of this uh, second opto isolator is to isolate uh, this external input which is for a pedal switch the module takes an ac input on uh, on this um, uh, connector and uh, it has a uh, di discrete uh, rectifier uh, and filtering cap so that it can turn that AC input into DC voltage that the board can use. We have an 8-bit micro right here. It's uh, an STM8S uh, microcontroller and a 7-segment uh, uh, display module as well as a couple of uh, potentiometers here. And if you haven't guessed uh, already, this is a, uh, a spot welder controller board. And I think I've uh, mentioned this uh, before. I plan on building a spot welder. I'm still working on it. It's nowhere near functional. But the idea was to compare making your own controller to what you can get for cheap from AliExpress and see if it's really worth uh, building your own. So I'm not going to show anything more uh, right now. I'm not going to test it. All of this will be in a follow-up video, but you can check out this, uh, this module uh, in the links I place, I place in the description below. For those that are interested in professional-made PCBs, I would like to announce the sponsor of this video, JLC PCB, which is a professional PCB manufacturing service with very affordable prices. You can get 10 PCBs for just $2, and a stencil for just $6. I'll place a link in the description so you can check them out. Next up, I'll show some uh, connectors. I'm working on another project where I have to connect a uh, display with a flat flex cable to the PCB. So I ordered uh, these connectors for that purpose. I have selected the proper orientation because you can get these as a top side or bottom side connect. And that uh, refers to the uh, uh, side where you insert the flat flex to have the uh, the connectors uh, on the bottom side or on the top side of the uh, the connector. So I have selected the proper orientation, but the seller sent me the other type. So I have contacted the the seller and he is now sending a new set, which will hopefully be the, the right type because depending on the orientation or, or your, of your flat flex and whether it has contacts on top or bot bottom side and where you place your PCB, you need to think about uh, things like this. I have also ordered these uh, JST PH uh, connectors and cables. Uh, these are uh, surface mount uh, connectors. 
they are two pin uh, connectors two millimeter pitch and they are usually used for connecting lipo batteries or any kind of other accessories to a pcb uh, i'm going to use them for connecting a lipo battery to a pcb and the ph variant of the GS jst connector is rated for two amps uh, on awg24 and 100 volts so you can use them for plenty of other scenarios as well in my case I have a 600 milliamp hour battery which will probably never see more than 100 milliamps being pulled. I could have used a smaller connector as well but then they become more fragile and the, these are more like universal connectors. Next in the RF connector section I've got some RG316 uh, coaxial cable. Uh, this is uh, kind of flexible, it's a bit stiff but still flexible and a bunch of uh, different uh, SMA connectors and adapters uh, SMA, RP SMA, uh, BNC to SMA uh, adapter I have here and uh, the idea here is to uh, make a couple of uh, cables that I could use to improve my measurement setup when doing a low uh, noise measuring on my 6.5 digit multimeter just to see if I can get a more stable reading on the least significant digit. I'll probably do a video on this uh, once I have uh, the necessary time to crimp some connectors on, on this cable. Next up, a pretty insignificant item for a mail bag, but very important when you don't have it. These are blades for the hobby knife, uh, this kind of knife. These are cheap blades and like I said, if you have a project, and you need a fresh blade for a nice cut and you realize you're out of blades uh, uh, you should have uh, ordered them earlier I got these from Aliexpress in, in a few different uh, styles and I can say they're not good quality they, they become blunt pretty fast but I just switched to a new blade when that happens because uh, they are very very cheap next up I have an aluminium enclosure uh, it's black anodized aluminium as you can see on these uh, panels and they always ship them in this type of paper not really sure if this is really newspaper or some kind of wrapping paper uh, but it's nice that they do this so the enclosure doesn't arrive all uh, scratched up so i got this enclosure to build the uh, ad 584l voltage reference that i got from aliexpress into a nice enclosure with a switch to select between the different output voltage and maybe integrate a battery inside the enclosure as well it's really nice that we can get these uh, enclosures from china delivered for something like 10 bucks i remember years ago when i was starting with electronics and i wanted to build all kind of different circuits that i used to find in magazines or books and there was the issue of finding an enclosure. For most of my projects, I reused uh, food plastic cans, ice cream plastic cans, and they, they used to look awful. Uh, I've also tried making my own enclosures back then by using uh, plywood, but I was very bad at cap cutting that, and in the end, the boxes were very bad. Today, I can find anything I need, but I don't have the time to do it as much as I would like to. Next, I got myself a uh, USB card reader because I wanted a more ergonomic way of uh, quickly connecting um, SD cards to my computer. So I got this uh, Vention uh, branded one. I don't think this is an OEM manufacturer, so you might find this under different names as well. But I got it because uh, it looked to be uh, what I needed. It has USB 3.0, although I'm not sure the cards I have ever need a, a speed higher than USB 2.0 can offer. Uh, it also advertised uh, it doesn't need a driver. And I think another thing I was looking for at that time when I ordered it was uh, for it to have a short cable and have it integrated so I don't have to worry about uh, misplacing the cable or having it uh, accidentally disconnect. So this is uh, how it looks with all the uh, different ports on the sides. Just a uh, light plastic enclosure with a rather thick USB cable. If it's any good, I'll have to see after using it for a couple of uh, times. But if you want to order one yourself, there will be a link in the description of the video. 
just a few more words about this uh, USB card reader. Um, I've just tested it, connected it to my computer and uh, I can't say I recommend this. Uh, the first thing I didn't like is uh, the quality of the uh, connectors, the slots for the SD cards. Uh, they are low quality, they feel low quality, they feel like they they catch and they scratch on the uh, SD card and I really don't like that. They're not smooth like a good quality SD card connector uh, would work. And the second problem I encountered was that this does not work on all USB ports uh, on my computer where it simply does not detect this device and those ports work just fine, it's just that it doesn't detect this uh, USB card reader and I'm thinking it's a problem with the card reader because I've never uh, had a problem with, with those ports ever. They, they work just fine with any kind of device. So yeah, it, it installed without uh, uh, needing additional drivers. It, in, it installed automatically on Windows 7, which is, uh, which is great, but I can't recommend you buy this for those uh, two reasons. It has bad SD card slots, connectors, and uh, also it does not work on all USB ports I have on my computer. Next up, just a uh, roll of uh, reflective type adhesive tape. This is a uh, three meter long uh, green color. It has this uh, honeycomb uh, texture that makes it look really nice. And when you shine a light uh, in the dark, this thing uh, will really reflect. Personally, I just needed this uh, brightly colored tape and I couldn't find anything else for a similar uh, price. Um, I plan on putting some stripes of this on an RC plane that I'm building so it looks nice and it's visible in the air. Banggood uh, sells these in a variety of colors and for less than $3 a roll you can't go wrong with uh, something like this. Next up uh, I got more of these uh, NEMA 17 uh, dampers. In Voldog uh, 181 I showed how I installed a set of these on the X and Y axis uh, motors on my Creality CR10 3D printer but the problem is that after installing one on the Y axis motor I can't get a good alignment as the motor now has uh, some give from the flexible part of the damper and the belt puts tension on the motor and, and twists it at, a, at an angle. So the solution here is to 3D print a bracing structure and add a second damper on the back of the Y axis motor and brace it from both sides to the frame. This way balancing the, uh, the forces on the motor and keeping it aligned with the frame. So like I mentioned previously on the channel, most of the times I just print improvements for the printer itself and not really stuff useful for me in some project, but I don't mind that. It's just something I wasn't aware of uh, was going to happen before I purchased the uh, printer. And next up, still some parts that I use for upgrading the printer. I wanted to build a uh, spool holder because when you have a new one kilogram spool of filament, it's pretty heavy and I've noticed the extruder motor actually has problem pulling on the uh, heavy spool with the stock mount on the uh, top of the CR10. And this resulted in uh, some under extrusion when it happened. So I decided to print a, uh, a spool holder on bearings that would uh, run smooth. I picked a slightly more complex design I found on Thingiverse and uh, this design uses um, these uh, uh, bearings. These are pretty standard in, in the industry. I think they are 608 ZZ uh, bearings or something like that. And it also uses some of these uh, 6 by 3 millimeters uh, magnets on the back. So the um, uh, spool holder uh, attaches to the um, metallic case of the CR10 motherboard. So this is uh, the uh, end result. Uh, it's a pretty complicated build with lots of parts to, to print. Probably the most complicated uh, 3D uh, print I did so far in terms of the number of parts used. But I think it uh, turned out great. And let me show you. Now if I place the, the spool, uh, it can uh, rotate uh, without much force on these uh, rollers. So I'm expecting this to, to solve the problem with the, the under extrusion when I was using these uh, heavy spools when they are new. 
So I highly, I highly recommend you do this upgrade on your printer. You don't have to necessarily pick a, uh, a spool holder as complicated as this one. There are simpler ones that, that you can uh, print and you can find them on Thingiverse. But I just liked how this one is uh, designed and uh, chose to do this one. And these are the last items shown in this video. Let's uh, start with this uh, LC filter module that is usually advertised and sold for RC planes. But because uh, there we have uh, analog video and other sensitive circuits, uh, you want to minimize the noise by installing one of these uh, filters on the power lines of the sensitive circuits. But of course you can use these to filter any other circuit that you need uh, because you simply have an input and an output and you install this on the power line. Uh, on this board you get some uh, ceramic capacitors, uh, an inductor of course, an, el an electrolytic uh, capacitor um, and I also see there's a MOSFET and a diode on this board. Not sure of the role of, uh, of the, the MOSFET. It could be doing a reverse polarity protection, but I'm not sure that is what they're doing here. One thing is certain, this module will filter out the uh, high frequency noise induced by a brushless motor or uh, servos running from the same power source. Next, I have a uh, battery balancing module for a forest battery, but this actually uses the HY2213 and this chip is actually designed for single cell balancing but you can duplicate that circuit for as many cells you need to achieve balancing for the whole pack so i mentioned i want to build the ad584 uh, l reference into an enclosure and that circuit needs around 15 volts for good stability so i'm thinking at maybe using a four cell uh, lithium solution to power it the alternative would be to use two nine volt batteries but I just hate 9 volt batteries and I'm not sure which route to go for this project. I'm open to suggestions on how I could get 15 volts uh, for my voltage reference and um, I'm not going to use a, uh, a boost circuit because it would be a nightmare to find the right balance to filter all the noise from that boost circuit so it doesn't get into my uh, uh, voltage reference circuit. And the last item in this video is this uh, very tiny but interesting module. It's uh, based on the uh, MAX30102 pulse oximeter and uh, also heart rate sensor. And this guy is designed for uh, wearables. So it's the type of sensor that you put your finger over its window and it can measure the pulse rate as well as the oxygen in your blood. And you can read these data digitally over the white um, I squared C interface. It's uh, quite exciting that you can find chips like these, very inexpensive, so you could build your own Arduino medical type project or experiment much easier and cheaper than uh, what was possible a few years ago. Thank you for watching. That was all for today. Let me know in the comment section if you found something interesting. Send me some feedback by clicking the thumbs up or thumbs down button on the video and I will see you next week with a new video.